in the Rhonda, we are facing basically two types of difficulties. Uh, the first one is very obvious. It is the left hand precision and agility. Uh, the second one seems to be less apparent, but it's, it is of equal importance. It is uh, bow distribution. Uh, the first can be solved by applying a very simple but effective method of slow practicing legato and with two types of dotted rhythms. Here is a little example of it. The second one would be dot rhythm. The third one would be reverse dotted rhythm. I would suggest to be very careful with raising the tempo too rapidly uh, and to achieve the final tempo of very, very gradual. One more thing worthwhile mentioning is the repetition. Very often we find ourselves repeating the same passage endlessly with no or very, very little improvement. I think that if something is not significantly improving within few under tempo repetitions, we should start searching for the root of the problem without further repetition. Often in a small change in the left hand balance, preparation of the shifts in the elbow can help us overcome the difficulty. Here is a little example. Here is the first scale in the rondo. There is this little delay in preparation of the thumb for going into some position. If I'll just simply prepare it earlier, it could be much easier. So the shift to the thumb position would be would be much more efficient. Uh, the second one, uh, for instance, uh, this figure. It's especially important for uh, people who don't have a long fourth finger, and I'm one of those. Uh, it is quite important to find the way to balance toward the fourth and weak finger in uh, in the passages like this, uh, it will significantly improve the playing with the fourth finger. It's a very small thing, but significant help. Now our bow distribution. It is very important to pre-plan where in the bow we're going to execute certain strokes. For instance, it is quite obvious that all of the spiccato or satyr strokes should be played in the middle of the bow, where uh, the bow jumps the best. Uh, the problem is that we have to get there right before, so we can start jumpy stroke uh, more or less effortlessly. Here is the example. <laughs> Here is the other one. If we play this figure too close to the frog, we will lose the lightness of the character and can face certain physical discomfort. If we just move it to the middle of the bow, it will be much easier. Surprisingly, bow distribution decisions can even influence the quality of our left hand playing and a good example would be broken octaves uh, before the last refrain in Rondo. If uh, we play uh, this broken octaves further away from the frog, closer to the tip of the bow, it will be much easier to control the left hand. I would suggest to pay as much attention in the Rondo to the matters of bow distribution as to the quality of intonation and agility. Have fun learning this charming little piece.